hi everyone hope you are doing good welcome to the next video on my youtube channel my name is Saurabh Bharti Microsoft Dynamics 365 professional this is the platform where I come and share my knowledge and experience with you all so without further delay let's start the today's topic and today's topic is the continuation of our last uh, two parts of the global inventory accounting which we are talking about so Without further ado, let's start the today's topic and see that what we have it for today. Now, just to have a quick recap, what is global inventory accounting? Uh, basically, it provides you uh, the solution which enables the organizations which are basically, uh, let's say the international organizations who requires the val inventory valuation in 12 currency or they would like to have the dual valuation as per their different accounting standards or the or for the reporting purpose if you have already watched the previous two videos we have talked about how do you install this what are the configuration in the process we have also uh, spoke about and also talked about one transaction on the purchase side and have seen that how it reflects the value in a different currency now today's focus is completely on the reporting and understand the valuation part as well so what we are going to do is that we are going to pick up one scenario and see that how my purchase cost gets converted to my different inventory value uh, the cost price and also when we sell that inventory in different currency and then based on the R configuration which we have defined for a valuation currency how it is going to be reflected and what are the reporting options which we have in the system that is what we are going to talk about so we are going to talk about the transactions in the reporting now to understand it better, let's take this example here. So now USMF has a headquarter in UK, let's assume that. And USMF wants to value the inventory in both USD and the GBP. Now we have created one product, GI002. Let's take an example. Now in USD, when we talk about the USMF, for this product, the inventory valuation which has been defined is the FIFO. And for USD valuation and the FIFO combination, let's take an example that we have a purchase order with 10 quantity with the $100 value. Then we have five quantity with $75 value. Now, if we sell the 12 quantity of this particular product, then what is going to be my cost of goods sold in USD as per the FIFO method? So it is going to be 130 now how 130 because the first project first uh, purchase order has come first which is the hundred dollar value so 10 quantity will go from there and then two quantity will be from the other purchase order the next purchase order which we have it which will be 30 so the total value will be 130 now further talk about like uh, if we want to report this inventory transaction both the purchase and the sales in GBP then how the system or the global inventory accounting is going to help us and what will be the equivalent value now in GBP if you remember our previous example what we have done is that we have set up the valuation method as an average and we have selected the currency as GBP so which means all these transactions we want to convert into GBP with the average value now if you see it is what it is going to do is that it is going to have the PO1 with 10 quantity which will be converted into GBP 63.47 now how this is getting converted this is getting converted based on the exchange rate which we have defined in the global inventory accounting ledger setup so there we have the value we have the exchange rates defined as 63.47 uh, GBP is equal to $100 so this is going to be my value then for the five quantity, which is 75 USD in GBP, it is going to be 47.60. Now, when I sell this quantity, what is going to be my value? It is going to be 88.486. Uh, 
uh, based on the valuation which I have it. Now, this is our scenario and this is our expected value. Now let's go to the system and see that how it is going to reflect for us based on the transactions which we have performed in the system. Now let's take this example with I think I have already explained this particular purchase order in the first video but let's pick up. So I have created two purchase order 126. So if I click on this I have this uh, particular product which is having 10 quantity the unit price is 10 the total value is 100 and I have invoiced this purchase order. Now when I go to my invoice and click on the invoice here and I can go to the lines to look at the transactions uh, which have been generated. So look at to look the transactions you need to click on the inventory and then click on the events and the measurements. And once you click on this, this is showing me the events and measurement in the original transactions like we have the USD and the whatever the valuation which we have it. Now, if I want to look at my different ledger which I have defined which is my GBP. So I can click on the invent global inventory accounting events and measure. And this is going to tell me that this 100 USD has been accounted in how many GBP. So if you see it, I have 63.47, the same 10 quantity. And in the bottom, it also provides you the, the line details about this measurement. And if you can see here, you have the exchange rate uh, populated here based on where this inventory has been converted. So I have 63.47, which is matching with my example, which we have picked up. Uh, now let's take the other uh, purchase order uh, where we have defined, let's say the five quantities. So that's the 127 purchase order. Again, this has been invoiced. So I can click on the invoice here. I can go to the lines and then I can click on the events and measurements. Now, once I click on this again, I have USD and then for looking at the global inventory events. So for my this particular ledger, I have defined this ledger here. So if you see it is defining 47.60 and then I can see that what is the exchange rate it has picked up. So this is on my purchase side. Now let's go to the sales side. So if I go to the next step here and I can look at that, what is my sales order which I have created for this. So I can click on, uh, I can I can open this particular uh, purchase order, a uh, sales order and look at that like how this uh, sales order has been created and what quantity we have added. So I have added 12 quantity which I'm selling it at a different price which is my revenue. But let's look at that uh, the cost of goods sold which it has generated. So if I go to invoice here this is my posted sales invoice. This is my product, which I have same product, which I have used here and I can click on inventory. Now, just to look at my uh, normal lot uh, inventory transaction, I can click on the lot transaction. I can see that 130 is my inventory value based on the FIFO and for FIFO, you know that uh, we need to run the inventory recalculation of, uh, 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 to get the FIFO valuation from the system. Now, Let's look at that what it has created for my global inventory accounting. So I can click on this inventory and then I can go to events and the measurements. So I can see that 12,000 uh, USD it has uh, created uh, for, for that value, which is my uh, the price which I have entered there. But let's look at from the valuation perspective. So if I go to the valuation, now you can see this here. It has created 88.46 as the uh, inventory value for me here, right? Which is based on the same exchange rate which we have provided here. Now, if I want to understand how this 88.86 has been calculated, so it, is cal it has been calculated in uh, as per the average valuation, okay? So now let's uh, let's let's see that uh, if you want to calculate this uh, the the average based on the transactions which we have it. So let's take an example how much uh, value we had uh, for uh, for for the purchase transactions. So if I go back, so I I can see that for these five quantity I had a value of forty seven point six zero. 
plus for uh, 100 quantity in the US, uh, the USD which was converted the other purchase orders. So the value which I had was 63.47. So this is my total value, but this is for my uh, total 15 quantities because 10 for one purchase order, five for another purchase order. Now if I divide by 15, uh, here so this is going to give me the per unit price as an average price for me now if I multiply this by my 12 quantity which I am selling it out so the price which comes is the 88.856 now which is equal to the value which I have got in my GPP so that's how system is going to uh, uh, calculate uh, your inventory value based on the valuation which you have defined in the global inventory accounting parameters plus also it is going to convert in the currency based on the defined exchange rate so hope this gives you a fair idea that how the inventory global inventory accounting is helping you in getting the valuation in dual currency and also as per the dual inventory valuation method now, uh, Microsoft is working on this. There are limited valuation methods which are supported as of now, but I'm sure in future they are going to provide more valuation method and it is going to be in sync with the valuation methods which are supported in, uh, in, in our core uh, inventory management process for T65. Now, the next thing which we need to understand here is now someone can say that now there is no finance impact of this. I don't have this, but how do I have the reporting about these transactions which have been generated? Now, if you remember the last video, which uh, I have posted in that we have uh, spoken about that, uh, how this, the reporting for the global inventory accounting is supported. So it is supported using the uh, Power BI now how do you configure that that i have provided in the last video now there is one correction here the if you remember the power bi file which we have downloaded from the lcs uh, microsoft has uh, provided a new re released a new version of that and that is available on the github and that's a version 2.1 so if you download this uh, this will work for you and it has updated dashboards and a different types of reports which are available for this global inventory accounting and also there was a sync issue between uh, the dynamics transactions and the uh, and the this power bi dashboard refresh on the previous version which has also been resolved now let's look at this power bi report so i have this power bi uh, report which I have configured for this and I have linked this with my environment and that I have already shown you in my previous video now if you look at this uh, this is how like different valuation uh, or different uh, inventory reports if you see on the left hand side which are available here right now you can see that there is a very limited data which i can see it and that's because i have posted few transactions here but the important thing for you to understand is like what are the different ledgers you have created so now i have only one ledger which has been created and where i have posted the transactions so this is coming up here so it is in sync with my dynamics 365 transactions or the global inventory ledger which i have defined I also have an option of selecting the fiscal period. So I have the 2024 period, which has been defined. So it is showing me that, showing me the currency, the exchange rate, and what is the input major basis I am taking? What is the valuation method I have selected for this ledger that is also been shown here? How many active products are there, which I have defined using this particular valuation? What's the total val days inventory on hand of value? Uh, inventory turnover, ending balance, all these details are displayed here. Now also you can see in the bottom you have the uh, option of uh, inventory accounting statement where it is showing me the total value which I have received, then the cost of goods purchased, delivered and the invoice uh, which, which is showing here and the goods received not invoiced inventory so there are purchase order which has been uh, received but not invoiced so that's also is been reflected here 
I have different reports here, which gives me the different uh, uh, analysis here. So if I want to see the inventory balance by the product, it is showing me here that what is my inventory uh, balance. What sucks UGS? So if you remember our example, the UGS which we had was the 86.36. And if I take my cursor, it is showing me that also here. Uh, top products by the inventory. So there is only one product and this is showing up this one product only. And similarly, I have a lot of other reports here depending on the transaction. So I have two products where I have performed the transaction. So you can three products basically. So GI and support and this product and it is showing me all the different amounts, quantities and the values which I have performed using this. Then also I have the comparison of the cost uh, which is available for me here. And then also I have purchase price variance if I am using a standard cost and then if there is a variance and the production variance which is available if I am using the production process right now there is nothing which is reflecting here and there is simple reason for that is that I have not used these products in the inventory uh, uh, production process. So this is about that how the global inventory accounting transactions which you have uh, reported or uh, transacted in different currency or the different valuation uh, you can report using the Power BI. And this is going to be really helpful for you from the reporting purpose. So quick recap, uh, we spoke about, we saw one scenario where how the inventory value is getting converted into a different valuation method, which is the average from FIFO to average, which means it is supporting the dual valuation. And then also we saw the transactions from USD to the GBP. So it is also supporting our dual currency. There are more permutation combinations which you can do with this particular feature that I leave up to you and explore uh, more uh, based on your requirement. Only thing is that Microsoft is going to uh, provide more details and enhance this feature in future. So keep eyes on this and uh, keep, keep yourself up to date with the Microsoft updates which you are going to get around this particular feature. That's it for this video. I hope this helps you in understanding the uh, uh, this global inventory accounting complete process. So we have done three videos on this. If you have not watched them, uh, go ahead and watch the previous two parts and then come to this part and then look at this. Thank you. That's it for this video. Hope this is going to help you out and uh, you can go to go to your customers and talk about this particular feature. Thank you. Take care.